is uh, Kosi is chief executive of um, small Ghana Enterprises Agency. Ghana Enterprises Agency. That's a new name, isn't yes, it? Yes, that's the new name. Okay. All right. So uh, we heard about you starting the budget two years ago, isn't it? That uh, government was going to create a platform and a major intervention for young people to receive resources to facilitate their own ideas into a business. Yes. So what then? What then is you start? Really, you start is what the name stands for. You start mm -hmm. with the you really representing the youth and asking or supporting them or building them to start their own businesses. Mm -hmm. Over the years, if you look at the statistics and the dynamics across the world, there's a lot of need for interventions to support the youth to be able to create employment, to be able to start their own businesses. So the idea was that government was looking at different ways in which they could support the youth of this nation. Um, there have been various interventions that come up, but this time we wanted to look at a different pathway to supporting the youth and really pay close attention and be intentional in how we provided that kind of support. So the youth that then was a vehicle that has been designed to support the youth to start, grow and build their businesses. Well, so what are the components? So there are really three main components of that. Um, we're looking at how do you create or provide them with knowledge to be able to start a business. So you see there are a lot of youth who have skills, yeah, those who want to start something, they have an idea, but they don't know how to go about it or where to go. And so this program creates the opportunity to provide knowledge, to provide really support in accessing markets, to provide them with support to actually ac uh, access um, financing or facilitate financing for the program. And even support through regulatory agencies as well. But this is all being done under three major components, which is the use that um, commercial, which would be really led by the financial institutions. There's the use that the district um, entrepreneurship program, which is what we and other partners such as NEIP, NYA, and the others are coming together to support with implementation. And the third part is the Youth Start Grace Works, which is looking more at the faith-based um, organizations and how to partner with them to roll out this intervention across the nation. But the faith base, so you're going to do it through churches? Yes, you're going to be working okay, through so, the churches, so the, the mosques. So who is eligible, who is eligible to, to apply? Um, really, I mean, as I mentioned, this is really a youth intervention. So when we are talking about who's eligible, we're looking at people within the ages of 18. We extended the youth bracket to 40 for many reasons in terms of the duration of the intervention and what the expectations are. And then we're looking at those who might have finished because of the nationwide spread and because of the types of interventions we've had in the past and the need to also kind of spread it across the youth um, population. We decided to look at those who might have finished BEC and never been able to move on but have a skill set and want to start something. We're also looking at those who have skills, right? So there are those who've gone through vocational skills and didn't move on to the next level or they have that skill set and they haven't started. So they're eligible to apply as well there are those who want to start a business they are eligible to apply those who have even youth who have youth led MSMEs right who need some form of support to grow accelerate the growth of their businesses so that's what we are there to provide support and those people are eligible the goal is as much as possible under the youth start intervention to target a million people to be able to access some form of support and so we phase that out into various um, phases to be able to make it more um, up. So by the end of the first round of the program, you would have supported a million people? That's, that's by the end of the entire project, we would have supported a million people. Okay, so I finished university. I studied uh, archaeology. I want to get into a pure water business. My skills are that I can read and write English and I can write, I can present data and stuff like that. Am I eligible? You are eligible, actually. I think Won't one... Won't you say there are too many pure water businesses? No, it depends on how you do it differently. Because if you look around, there are so many things that people do, but they add innovation. Mm -hmm. And really, the whole training and the whole assessment is to kind of help you build on that innovation. You might have something that is different. There are so many waters in the world, but people continue to produce water. There are those who add color to the water and add vitamins, you know. Or if you go to the U.S., you have what they call vitamin water. They have other um, sports water. They have just ordinary water. They have sparkling water. So there's always um, an opportunity to add value. 
And also you have to look at it as to where they're targeting. Because there are some youth who live in different parts of the country who might not have access like we do. And so they benefit from starting something So you're not going to tell me uh, pure water might not work in, uh, in Newtown where you live. Can you do tomatoes? I, I do, is that part of your remit? I think the work we're going to do is to help you think through. Mm -hmm. So one of the things the training will do would get you to start assessing or thinking through what you think your plan is. And also thinking of options and alternatives and really thinking about what will work mm -hmm. you know because at the end of the day you need to come up with something that will work so I think the whole program is really looking at how to be successful and how to make something work you know you also have people who have different skill sets right so besides saying that oh I have a pure water business there are people who say I also went to school I'm a mechanic right mm -hmm. or i studied ict i want to start uh, programming a, a business that supports the financial sector or hospitals with all sorts of software and i want to be able to build on that and so we help you think through it to see how best you can start it and be successful in it mm, that's very that's very interesting okay so i'm a young person i don't know anyone i don't have any connection i want to benefit from you stars because i'm watching kosi on tv mm -hmm. what should he do I think the first thing to do is actually really go online if they have the ability and they can go online to really read about this. Thankfully, these days people have like all sorts of social media and they have internet access. So once you go on it and you search for GEA, the Ghana Enterprises Agency, and you go onto our website, it will direct you there. You can actually just Google the Ustart Ghana Jobs and Skills Project and it would also give you options. You can actually even walk into one of our offices. So the Ghana Enterprises Agency has been set up where it has over 210 offices across the nation. Is it in districts? In districts. Okay. Right, and we have 37 business resource centers that are also scattered across various districts. So it gives you access. So you can walk into one of the district assemblies, walk into the business advisory centers, and it gives you the opportunity for you to then apply or to ask questions about this. The YEA offices as well, the NEIP offices as well, you can walk into it and they provide the information. So are the digital assemblies your partners in this? Because if I'm, I'm, I'm in Gupugu Yoyo or I'm in Kintampo and uh, I, I should be able to go to the district assembly office and get all the information. Oh yes, something. you should because the district assembly offices are partners. We work with them. Mm -hmm. It's a big collaboration and that's one of the beauties of this intervention. The idea was not for it to be focused on just one ministry or one agency. And so there are a lot of agencies that um, have led in the implementation, have led in the sensitization. The Ministry of Rural um, Local Government has actually done a lot of work in going around the nation to sensitize and sensitize their district assemblies. And we've also gone along with the various um, implementing agencies to make sure that people are aware of what is happening. And so it's actually seated and, and, and embedded in the district level so that we bring it access closer to the people who need it. Mm, I see. That's, that's really interesting. Are you, are you expecting to go through tons of application forms and you know, if you have an opportunity for a million spaces, you're probably going to get 10 million application forms. Are you prepared for that? We've always been prepared. I mean, that's the work we do. Mm -hmm. In the past four years, we've actually provided support to over 800,000 people. And so mm -hmm. one million is just adding a few numbers to what we've done in the past. But this time round, it's been intentional with working with the youth and providing them with access to em employment, which is through entrepreneurship you mean You mean the organization has provided 800,000, support to 800,000 different people? Yes, we have. Over the last few years? Yes, that's over the last, it is very significant. How are you confident of that data? I'm very confident because we keep numbers, we keep the dates, we have technology that holds our data. Um, we have, if you look at our work, for the first time in the nation's history, we've given access to funding to over 302,000 people, it's with 60% of them being women. For the hmm. first time in the That's nation's history. 60%? Yeah. But 300 are women? Yes. And you gave them what? Financial support? We gave them financial support. Skills training? We've provided others with skills training across the nation and provided them with startup support to build it. And now that's why we're looking at moving it from just generalizing it to the youth focus because we've seen the need across the nation. And we believe that if we're able to do more, we'll be able to transform um, a lot have of been, lives. Have you been businesses. too quiet about your achievements? I think have you been so. too modest about your achievements? We've been very, very modest about our achievements. It's time that you have to start talking. <laughs> wow. We, and we and these 300,000 are real people? Yes, they're real people. Yeah, our systems are designed. We really focus on using technology for one, transparency, two, using it for reach. 
And through this database that we've been able to build over the years, we're able to tell exactly who, how, and why. Mm. And we'll also be able to use that data to decide on policy and decide how we're going to drive policy in the future. And so as much as possible, our work is always based on data and numbers and why it's important for us to focus on certain regions, certain subgroups, and why and how women uh, make changes or drive changes. It's all done through so the I, work. I'm going to do like a roadshow in the universities and tertiary institutions and tell them all the things you're telling me right now. Oh, yes, we are. We're going to go around and tell people about what we've done. I think we need to do more of that, I must be honest. Um, we focused on doing the work in the past four or five years in trying to make sure that for the first time, as I mentioned in the nation's history, especially with the direction of the president, Nanado Dankwe Kufuado, we've actually pumped over $150 million in access to finance for MSME development, one of the largest on mm, the that's, continent. That's a significant figure, $150 million. Yes. It's gone to uh, uh, small scale, Micro, small, small and medium, and medium enterprises. Micro, small and medium enterprises to support their businesses. To support their the businesses, country. yes. Wow. And people have stories to tell. People share stories. People walk into our offices. So as you started at the beginning and you said that I hope someone, if someone is listening, how do they approach us? There was one man who was listening to our program and we're talking about our, one of our projects, which is the Ghana Economic Transformation Project, which is where we were giving access to finance to SMEs. And he applied. He called his son and said, what is this woman saying? Or can she kakra na waka brofo kakra? And then we told him, he, I mean, his son explained to him what we were trying to achieve. And he applied. He has a recycling um, firm, industry. And when he applied, he wasn't sure if he would get it. So when he, he put a number there, um, at that time when he went back to buy, the prices had gone up. He came back to us and said, this is what I applied for, but this is the new invoice. This is the invoice due to the change. So we had a committee meeting and agreed to support him because it was for a good cause and it was impacting the environment positively. And guess what? He bought this and he came back last month and said that due to the funding we had given him, he had increased his turnover up to 100,000 plus Ghana cities a month mm. from more than by more than 80% of That's what he That's an made. amazing story. And he had actually bought another equipment the same one we had paid for he had increased his capacity and needed another one he had actually paid for it with his own funds mm -hmm. you know and so these are some of the stories we have a whole lot of them there's one in the pilot phase of the use that there was one guy who had gone through napco at that time mm -hmm. and had saved part of his money and when he came he saw us on facebook he applied for the pilot's face and we he learned a lot but we hadn't told them we were going to give them funding at that time so he went back to Winchi, wrote a business plan from what we had done during the training, and the businessman in Winchi gave him 20,000 CDs mm -hmm. and said, go and build a, a, a fish pond and start aquaculture with the plan that you gave me. And that's how he started. Hmm. So there's a, lot, there's a lot of good stories. There's a lot of people who are succeeding. This evening, I just got a call from a person with disability who we've supported, and he was like, I'm very, very grateful. And th that's the core of the work we're trying to do, is to create opportunity and hope for people and to make sure that they succeed and they're successful in the work they're doing. And that's what Ghana Enterprises Agency is about. And the beauty of it is that the Ghana Enterprises Agency was transformed at a time when the world was changing. Mm -hmm. And it met a situation that had to bring hope and bring about change. And all this was through the vision of the president, through the vision of uh, the Minister of Trade and Industry as well, who led and supported us through this transformation. So what the number somebody can call so that, uh, I hear you talk about websites and all that, but people want to just make a phone call and talk to somebody and say, this is my story, can you help me? What's the number they can call? So our, our number is 0302. 0302. 74. 74. 77. 77. Okay, so viewers, uh, the number to call, give it to your friends. 0302. 74. And the rest is seven. So mm -hmm. seven four seven 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 four and four sevens zero three zero two seven four and quadruple seven. That's the number to get uh, Kosiyanki and her team on. I, I think it's an amazing story. We need to do a lot more with you uh, yes. to tell the Ghanaian people what you have done with the real stories that we have. Uh, do you want, like to say anything at the end? 
No, I, I just want to give um, the opportunity for Ghanaians to be successful. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we've done over the years, one of the things this government has done is to really focus on supporting the private sector. And by supporting the private sector with, through the Ghana Enterprises Agency has been providing knowledge and information and providing the opportunity to access funding in ways they've never done before. And I believe and I know that the Youth Start intervention, especially this first phase, would really focus on creating that opportunity for the youth to take advantage of that will transform their lives, will transform the families and really transform the economy of Ghana. That's all I have to say. Somebody almost asked, the 150 million you talk about, did it also go into capacity building? No. It all went into it funding? It all went into funding. Oh, I see. And that's how we were able to fund 302,700 302, persons. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Okay. Okay. Let's say something else. I see you writing something now. No, I, I just wanted to say that, yes, we at the beginning, um, the first day we opened, we did experience some challenges on the platform. Mm -hmm. It was from a telco, uh, one of the telcos. But we worked with them overnight and they fixed it. And so it so should be So the platform is working now. So people go it, Yeah, it was always working. But there was one telco that had a challenge. But mm -hmm. we worked with them and then they picked it up and worked on it. And I just wanted to comment on the enrollment. There are different interventions that are abysmal. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to note that there are a lot of interventions, but a lot of other people have also benefited positively from them. And if we look at it from that angle, then people don't take advantage of the opportunity. So I would advise that people take advantage of the opportunity because, yes, there are also people who succeed in, from these opportunities. Mm. Okay, thank you, Kosi Anki.